Hi everyone, so in today's video, I'm gonna be showing you my new updated quick and easy makeup routine. So on my last makeup tip video, uh, you guys were asking what my new makeup routine was and the look that I was using in that video. So I figured since it definitely has changed since the last time that I have done a makeup routine video, I figured I would go ahead and share that with you guys. And for the first time ever, I think it's actually less steps and less products than I was using before. And who doesn't love that? Who doesn't love something that, if you guys are asking about it and it's actually easier than it was before, I figured, why not? And this is definitely gonna be a talk through, kind of catching up with you sort of video. And just before we head on into the video, don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't. It'll just notify you on your YouTube feed um, anytime that I have made a new video. Um, so many of you guys in my last video were saying that it'd been so long since you had seen a new video from me and I'm still uploading every week. So if that's happening, you're probably just not getting the notifications. So just in case you miss me. So starting out with a primer, and I'm still loving the Hourglass Veil Primer. And if you guys have a suggestion for something else, I think this is the third bottle that I buy in this. Yes, this is the my travel size one. I also have the larger one for at home. Um, but I've tried, I feel like, maybe four or five others while using the Hourglass, and I feel like nothing is as good, but I still feel like there's of course room for improvement. So if there is a primer that you guys absolutely love and recommend, please let me know. All right, so since we have our primer on and I've cleansed and moisturized my face before starting this video, um, the first new product that I'm gonna be starting off with is the new Lawless Foundation. And I have heard so many clients of mine uh, talk about this and recommend it. So I walked into Sephora the other day and someone else was asking about it. And so basically the woman like working there was like giving her the whole lowdown on the brand and how it's like talc free and basically like really pure, really good for the skin. Um, but it also has like a really good finish. So basically I was just kind of side busting, <laughs> listening in on their conversation. And I was like, that sounds amazing. So she ended up color matching me and I absolutely love the formula. So it's very silky, um, definitely not a matte finish, which I've tried other dewy finishes and I feel like it ends up being too dewy because I do have combination skin. So in certain areas, a dewy foundation is actually like too greasy and slick on my face. It basically is like a second skin. I went ahead and got their like setting powder as well. She said that this was also great for baking, which I definitely agree. Basically this powder just leaves you like so poreless um, and it just, it never looks cakey, like never looks powdery, which is what I've always been looking for in a powder. And I feel like that's what I've always wanted out of this Hourglass setting powder. Everyone talks about how it's like really light and like kind of like almost dewy finish. Um, but every time I use it, it doesn't set my makeup correctly. Sure, it's not as heavy as like or as powdery as a normal setting powder, but I also felt like it never did its job and I continue to try, um, but I do feel that the new uh, loose setting powder by Lawless does what I've always wanted the Hourglass Veil to do. So, bye bye, <laughs> Hourglass Veil. So I'm gonna be using that Woke Up Like This Lawless Foundation and literally one pump has been more than plenty and it is buildable, which I love as well. And I do have to apologize, actually. I feel like I started a different kind of skincare about maybe almost two months ago, and my skin has actually been completely breakout free um, and really behaving. I feel like it just, it likes what I've finally been, you know, using. And last week I just had pretty stressful week, both like personally and like with work. And every time I have like a stressful week, I feel like my skin is just like, ah. And so I actually feel like I have so many breakouts around my nose, which I've like never had before. That's just like not an area that I normally break out in. So I feel like every time I sit down to film a makeup video, 
I feel like my skin is like always at its worst. It'll be a very like honest and accurate kind of try on of a new product. So for concealer today, I'm still gonna be using the uh, Too Faced Born This Way. And I feel like the reason why I keep using this one, it is the blend ability of this product. I feel like it's one of the easiest concealers I've ever blended out. Um, I've tried the shape tape. I feel like I'm not the biggest fan. I know so not a popular opinion, but I don't feel like it works that well for me. But I do feel that the Born This Way, like I said, it blends beautifully and it's really easy to work with, but I don't think it sets really beautifully or maybe I'm doing something wrong. But I feel like I've been trying to use slightly less of it. I feel like it's really easy to go overboard with. And I personally just like a little bit of kind of that natural skin showing through. Of course, I do have dark under eye circles and I do love the coverage and the color payoff that it gives me. But if I can go basically as bare as I can with using the product, that's obviously my goal. All right, so now I am gonna set everything with the Lawless uh, Classic Translucent Powder. And like I said, this stuff is so, so wonderful and it just sets your makeup um, really well. I feel like my under eyes crease a lot less with using this product, um, but it still gives it a very luminous finish. And now for bronzer, you guys know my little trick or what I like to do is I like using a face powder in a darker shade rather than using an actual bronzer. I know people have like recommended different colors and you know bronzers that are shimmer free but I honestly feel that using a darker shade in a powder is just always what I resort to. I also think it has like a prettier kind of finish on the face. And I'm using shade 4W2. So I, it's actually not a lot darker than my face. But what I like about that is that I can easily build up on. So now I'm gonna be contouring my nose and you guys know that I love to use the CoverGirls True Blend Cream Palette. And I kinda just like to lightly use my finger. I can easily use a brush. But honestly, with the cream, I feel like sometimes it almost goes on nicer with like the warmth of my fingers and I can easily buff it out if I feel like it's gotten to be too much. So two weeks ago, I posted a video on makeup mistakes that need to stop. And from what I know as an artist, and I've made videos on like how to correctly contour your nose through a more like artistic way, and people seem to have loved it, so I figured I would do a video on that. And I felt like a lot of the feedback that I got was like, I can't believe you did this video. Like you were just like bringing on the hate and it sounds really shady that you're, you know, like basically talking down about ways that other people do their makeup. And obviously that was absolutely not the intention. Of course, I feel like on YouTube or on social media, I feel like at this point, anything like can be misconstrued and just taken the wrong way. And I know that, but I also feel like if you are afraid and just always look at that, you would never upload anything and you would never do anything in life. So now I'm just gonna go back in with that Lawless translucent powder and just bake. And people were like trying to say like the examples you use, you're like making fun of like a Jaclyn Hill or you're, you know, and honestly, like I have so much respect for other YouTubers, especially other YouTubers doing better than me. Like who am I to, to bash anyone period? But another YouTuber, I mean, clearly like, obviously that is not what I'm trying to say. I'm not saying that in any way, if you were doing these things that they're wrong, I was just saying that from an artistic perspective, it's not doing your face favors. But the ironic thing about that too was that a lot of people were like, I love the way you do your makeup, can you please do an updated makeup routine? So here we are. <laughs> I always think it's funny. I feel like there's there's been videos that I've uploaded that I fear like, I hope this doesn't hurt anyone's feelings. I hope that this you know comes off the right way and then you guys love it. And then other times where I'm like, this is gonna be so helpful, I can't wait for people to see this. And sometimes people have an issue with it. So 
I feel like at this point it is kind of hard to to predict you know, how a video is going to do. For blush, I'm going to be using Luminoso, which is completely falling apart, but it is still my favorite blush. I do think that it's amazing what social media has done to the beauty industry. Um, so much good has come of it. Um, I, I really do think that it has pushed this industry um, to grow at a much faster rate than it would have without um, social media, just for the fact that, you know, there was like just so much emphasis on beauty products that I feel like makeup brands are even just creating more beauty products because they know they can sell it. Um, it's not necessarily that we need another highlighter palette or another eyeshadow palette, but it's the fact that brands know that I can make one and I can sell it like that. So for the eyes, I'm going to be using the Tarte in Bloom palette and I'm going to be using this color for the transition shade. And I basically only use two colors on my eyeshadow lately. By the way, my eyebrows so need to be done. I'm just gonna go with it today. So yeah, it's just interesting. I feel like I have friends and clients sometimes ask me like, like, what do you like plan on doing for the you know next couple of years or like where do you see YouTube you know heading in the next couple of years? And obviously, I don't think anyone really knows. Um, so I think one of the main things is as YouTubers, we need to obviously like from the beginning, but like we need to remain as absolutely authentic and honest with our audience as possible. Um, and that's something that I have always strived to be really, really honest with you guys. Um, I did get a lot of crap from my audience um, pretty early on and that's kind of when I started working with new brands. The most important thing on YouTube is the relationship um, that I have with you guys and you guys trusting me is obviously my number one priority more than views more than anything obviously is you know having you guys trust me that's obviously the whole point of this is that I want this always to feel like a friendship and like when you click on my videos it feels like you're sitting with your best girlfriend and we're just talking about hair and makeup. That's what I've always wanted it to be. And a lot of you guys have been asking um, about Monate and like, am I still using it? Am I still selling it? Like what happened? Um, and I think you guys are all very well aware that there were, you know, numerous lawsuits against Monate. It was on the news. I mean, you know, it got, way out of hand and it, I feel like anytime that someone had questions or someone you know said like make a video about this or make a video about this line and I want to understand how this works and I feel like every time I did I would just get so much crap for it and like you're just using your channel to like build your team and and I've said this a million times and I will say it again. I love Monate products from the moment I started using them. I fell in love. I am still using them today. Um, my hair, I've never been able to be this blonde and, you know, put bleach in my hair as often as I do and have my hair be the length of my extensions. I still do wear extensions like I've mentioned you, to you guys. Um, but I do it more for volume at the ends than for length because this is my hair and that's the extension. It's obviously done such amazing things for my hair. It's transformed a lot of my family's hair. I actually have an aunt who started having thyroid issues and her hair started thinning quite a bit. It's not a necessarily cheap, you know, shampoo, but but I really think it's going to help your hair. And she started using it and I'm so happy for her that her hair, could you not like in her crown area, she probably has double the hair that she had maybe two to three months before she started. So I, I see it firsthand with the people that I've recommended it to. So I know the product works. But I felt like every time I talked about it, you know, on social media anywhere, I just got so much crap for it. So that's why I was just like, you know what? I care more about, you know, you guys believing in me than, you know, making another sale through Monet. So yes, I'm still a part of Monet. Yes, sales are still doing phenomenally well. So they went to court. They won all their lawsuits. They had scientific 
proof that no, this is not in fact hurting anyone, hurting anyone's hair. Of course, when a product is doing so well and growing so vastly, it's bound to encounter someone that already had previous medical issues that maybe popped up at around the same time you started using the product and it's very easy to associate the symptoms or you know what is happening to your hair to the new product you're using i get it i probably would think the same thing but science has proven that that was not the case um but the sad part is that once you know that ruling came out that news was not on the news, of course. A very long <laughs> answer to your question, but whether I'm still using Monet, I absolutely am. Um, I think if anything, I am more in love with the product because I love what it does for my hair every day. I love how it's transformed so many of my clients' hair. I'm still so absolutely grateful for the support that I have always gotten from you guys, from the majority of you, um, and I always, Thank you for that. And the other question that I get a lot, and I actually get this asked more from hairdressers, is so like how am I a Redken ambassador and how do I work with Monate? And one of the reasons why I absolutely adore Redken and I liked Redken before I ever made a video for Redken, way before I even started on YouTube, I've just always been a fan of Redken. You guys know I went to a Redken affiliated school. I am Redken trained. Um, so Redken has just always been, you know, a part of my hairdressing knowledge. So some of my first YouTube videos on hair color are mentioning Redken and that's how Redken found me. And I've always said, I think Redken is way ahead of the game um, with both you know, their products and the science of their products and so many other things. I feel like Redken has been focusing on the science um, and basically like the protein of hair and everything um, way before it was trendy to kind of be doing that. And they were one of the first companies also that who focuses so much on education to bring on ambassadors. And so when Redken approached me to to be an ambassador. They basically said, we love what you're already doing. You genuinely love the products. Um, we want you to keep doing that. And if there's a product from, you know, here and there that you love from a different brand, it's okay for you to use that because let's face it, like that's how the world works. <laughs> that's how, um, I think that's so much more genuine. And I think when I do mention a Redken product, it's because I love it and not because Redken is pushing it down my throat. And Redken's never ever been like that. And I think that actually speaks volumes of what Redken is. So in terms of shampoo and the way that I can both use Redken and Monet products, the reason for that is I think that Redken shampoo, hair care, is very geared towards taking care of hair that has been colored, that has been processed. Um, it is formulated with the science to take care of hair that has been colored. It's the perfect system. Now, the way I look at Monet shampoos and conditioners is it's kind of in a way a more like, basically like a prescription. So not everyone needs Monet. Everyone could use Monet, absolutely. But for someone that has thick, luscious, growing hair, and we highlight or balayage maybe twice a year, their hair is super healthy, they have great amounts of hair, do they need to be using Monet? Not necessarily. So normally a client like that, when they ask, what should I be using on my hair? Normally I will recommend the Redken Extreme shampoo or the Color Extend line if they feel that their toner fades too quickly. Redken obviously knew me before, you know, I became an ambassador. Redken knew already what I liked and what I was using. And I feel like if they're okay with my choices and what I like to recommend, I kind of feel like that should basically answer your question about, you know, how, how is it that I can use, you know, these uh, two different lines. I feel like every time I do my eyebrows on camera because of the lights, it's kind of hard to see shadows. So sometimes it looks 
a lot lighter than it does later on camera and sometimes I feel like when I'm editing I'm like there's like an area right there that's completely sparse why didn't I fill that in and under these lights it looks filled in and it looks fine and so I feel like in the last two years on YouTube the only two brands that I've the only two hair brands that I've really collaborated with have been Redken of course and T3 which are the two hair brands that I am an ambassador for um, and it's been really nice to be able to just work really closely with a lot less companies but work really like intimately with them and I think that you guys have definitely really liked that as well instead of like every week being like hey there's like this new product or this new brand that I'm working with um, now one thing that I have been looking and I swear I've been like searching high and low to work with a good extension company that I absolutely love. You guys know that I was working with Glam Seamless for probably a little over two years, um, a while back, and the customer service just started being so bad. And I hate saying that about any company because I assume that anyone that's in business is in business to obviously, you know, serve a good product and good service. And I really do hate to put anyone's business down, but it was so difficult for me even, and I was working with them, so I can't even imagine how it was for someone else that, you know, wasn't, you know, collaborating with them. So it was just like one too many times that I was having issues and I was like, if I can't even get, you know, products for my clients and for myself, like I can't imagine how this is for everyone else. So finally had to just kind of cut ties and it's, you know, I, again, I think their product, their actual hair is great. I still stand by that. Um, like I said, just the, the customer service was just way too hard for me to work with. So I've been trying to talk to different extension companies and I really want to work with a company that, of course, number one, the hair has to be amazing. Um, and not just the quality, but the color. I feel like it's so hard to find colors that I really love. Um, and as a color specialist, I really want blondes that are beautiful and brunettes that are rich and not just like fake kind of extension looking sometimes, how they, that can happen. Um, so I think I have something in the works. And um, of course I've, tested out the hair for months now and we've been going back and forth and trying to figure out you know like how I can work with them so that we can have an amazing kind of relationship and opportunity that we can offer you guys so that's in the works and that's something I'm really really excited about because I know a lot of you guys have been asking like what extensions have I been using and I've been really quiet about it and that's because they are potentially the new brand that I will be working with and as soon as everything is ready to go I'll be super excited to announce that with you guys. There is also another little something in the works for you guys um, that I'm a little hesitant to talk about because I feel like it's still really early and I hate, I hate, absolutely hate you know, when people do that, when they're like, there's something really exciting coming, but I can't talk about it. I'm like, how do you want me to be excited about it if I don't know what it is? <laughs> so I feel like I'm totally doing that to you guys right now. So I'll give you a little hint, but it involves education and it involves me traveling to you guys. Um, but it's definitely not the traditional education kind of classes where I feel like it's such a big thing now. I have an idea of how I kind of want to do things a little bit differently. Um, I kind of want to do something that I feel like is not really in the market too much. Like I feel like education has always been a big thing for me. Um, I feel like my channel is educational. Um, I feel like if I weren't behind a chair and if I wasn't on YouTube, I would definitely be um, teaching. I love everything hair and I love sharing that with others. Um, and like I said, I feel like there is a lot of education out there. I feel like 
now is definitely the time where information about this field is really out there. You can get training in anything that you want, but I do have a little bit of a different take on the whole thing and um, I've never seen this done before. I think it'll be really, really amazing and I think it'll be a really, really amazing opportunity for you guys and I think it'll be another great way to to really connect with you guys in a different way that I haven't yet. And I feel like I am one of those YouTubers that is really lucky in that I get to meet a lot of you when you guys come and sit in my chair and have me do your hair. Um, I think that is really amazing. I do feel that I do connect with my audience a little bit differently than maybe other YouTubers do. So I am really excited about that and as soon as I'm able to share, I will do that with you guys. But yeah, we're basically done. And normally, the face I have just done, I can normally do this in 10 minutes. I do feel, obviously, today because I was talking to you guys, um, it took a little bit longer, but... And I'm just setting everything with the Morphe setting spray. And I did try the Hourglass setting spray. Um, what else did I try? I believe I tried a Bobbi Brown setting spray. Um, and like nothing compares to this damn Morphe spray. It smells wonderful. I feel like it has a ton of chemicals just because it smells this nice. But I feel like it's one of the least expensive ones that I've tried. And I do feel that it gives you a very flawless kind of look of like the makeup just looking like it's like melted into your face and i feel like it does a great job at you know making your makeup last a little bit longer so one thing that i've also been doing like literally since high school and i don't know that i've ever really shown it on camera but it was like getting a dark kind of bronzy color and i always have to kind of bronze my neck and it sounds so weird but I think even though I'll match my foundation to my skin tone I feel like with oxidation and then with the bronzing it is so easy for my makeup to end up looking darker than my natural color because I'm pale as shit basically I don't think people realize how pale and white I am I feel like even Sometimes when I walk into a Sephora, they're like, oh, you must be like a golden bisque. And I'm like, I wish. That's like all the bronzer that I'm wearing. And I feel like after I bronze my neck, I feel like I come alive. <laughs> I don't know why, it sounds so weird. And in high school, when I would wear kind of more like V-neck, not V-neck, but like, I feel like in high school, I didn't wear like high neck tops. Not that I was like exposing myself, but I feel like I always, bronze like my chest area and people would always be like oh my gosh like I love your skin color and I'm like you mean my bronzer yeah I would like to do another kind of catch up with me video and if there are things outside of hair and makeup that you guys would like me to talk about please leave suggestions for that down below and I would love to do another one of these I hope you guys found this video helpful um, I hope you like this kind of easier more laid-back kind of updated makeup routine and i hope you guys enjoyed our little chat thank you so much for watching I absolutely adore you and uh i will leave everything that i used listed down below if you guys have any questions about that so anyway thank you so much for watching and i'll see you in the next one bye